but thank you again for joining us on this Tuesday evening. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started just so we can make sure we have enough time um, for um, this lovely workshop that we have for you all. Um, so first, um, I wanted to go ahead and introduce myself um, and then go over some ground rules. So we can go to the next slide. Um, so first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Cynthia Tejeda Avina. I am the current chapter president of the Latin Alumni Chapter. I'm oh, sorry, Latin Alumni Network Chapter. Um, and so I just wanted to give a brief uh, ground rules. Um, just make sure you um, you keep yourself muted, just so we are not in uh, we don't get distracted on any um, conversations, and, and we direct all our attention to our um, our guest speaker. Um, and then being the fact that some of the content, if folks do share any anything within the chat or any emotions or or anything that they are sharing with their um, with themselves, um, please be respectful. And then uh, we do have the chat available if you want to go ahead and ask any questions um, or feel free to go ahead and raise your hand. And we'll try to get to you as soon as um, we have a moment within the presentation. And before we get started, uh, we always want to make sure we do a land acknowledgement, um, even if it's in a virtual setting. So um, at Cal Poly Pomona, we, we tend to do a land acknowledgement. So uh, we want to recognize the Gabrielino and Tungva people as the original caretakers of this land. We are grateful to work as guests here in what is today Los Angeles County. The traditions, ancestral, and unsedied territorial of Gabrielino and Tungva we ask that we each tread lightly, humbly, and with open hearts. We pay our respects to the Gabrielino and Tungva people, our ancestors, elders, and all of our relations past, present, and emerging. And at Cal Poly Pomona, um, there is a link that you can definitely um, look into to see like what territory uh, the Gabrielino and Tungva um, you are currently located at. Next slide, please. And so I want to go ahead and get us started. Um, so our guest speaker that we have um, is one of our own board members and proud alum of Cal Poly Pomona. His name is Chris Sandoval. Um, he serves as our University Relations Director for the Latin Alumni Network. Um, and as I mentioned, he is a proud alum of Cal Poly. He graduated with um, his bachelor's in, in business administration with an emphasis in human resources and management. He also continued his education, um, obtaining his master's in education um, from Azusa Pacific. And he currently works as a counselor within the Walnut Unified, Walnut Valley Unified School District. And of course, he is a, a working man. And so he is also an adjacent professor at APU and at Laverne University. And so I am excited to hear his content and all of his um, research and any tips that he can provide us in today's uh, workshop. So uh, Chris, take it away. All right, thank you so much for that introduction. Hello, everybody. Thank you guys so much for being here on this Tuesday, cold Tuesday night, uh, but it is dry. I think the rain the rain is done. Uh, if, we, if we can start real quick, drop in the chat. Are, are you a student? Are you an alum? Are you just kind of here because you heard about this? I'm just curious. Drop in the chat. Are, are you a student, an alum? Or are you just kind of hanging out with us because you heard about this? An alum, yes. Another alum, I love it. Awesome, student, yes. Oh, well, thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, so um, just really quick, I'll talk just really quick about me, kind of who I am, kind of how I got uh, how I got here, but then we'll kind of go over what we're talking about tonight in terms of emotional wellness, what that is, some of the stigmas behind it, and what are some of the things we can do um, as we deal with like life and life stresses. I mean, I, we have alum, we have students here. So we're all going through some things, challenges, just on a daily basis. So let's talk about that. Um, but uh, about me really quick, my name is Chris Sandoval. Um, education was an accident for me. This was not something kind of something I was planning to do in my career. I actually worked in sports and entertainment. Um, any Angel fans, uh, I, I worked, I worked uh, um, in Anaheim uh, for, for many, many years uh, with the team, uh, with the food and beverage team, and got to do a lot of really cool things and travel and see lots of sports and um, 
uh, different events throughout my career. And then I did a little bit of a pivot, pivot in my career where I kind of fell into education. Um, but kind of with what I'm doing now, um, you know, I do work as a counselor for Walnut Valley Unified. I also teach graduate students over at APU and over at Laverne University. Um, but it started with Cal Poly. I mean, this is home for me. Um, I have a big soft spot for Cal Poly. Had a wonderful time when I was there as a student. Um, I got my undergrad in MHR, Management and Human Resources, which is why I ended up doing at the stadium, uh, in HR. Uh, double minor in Spanish language and international marketing, and then uh, went on to APU for my graduate uh, degree. Um, in my career, I found mentors. I ask a lot of questions. That's just kind of me naturally. Um, I found my North Star. I, you know, I, I started really thinking about what is it that I want to do? What is it that is important to me? Um, and, and that's kind of how I made that pivot into education, just really giving back and working with youth was something I was really passionate about, became a student of my craft. Um, and one of the things that did not come natural to me was practicing self-care. That was something that was not natural to me. Um, I worked, I, I was always used to working a lot of hours, just being at the stadium. Um, even when we were off, you know, like when it was dark, when there was no events happening, we were still in the office working, getting ready for the events. So, I mean, I was working 15, 16, 17 straight days before I had a day off. And at the time, it was neat because it was exciting, but it got to the point where I'm like, hey, life-wise, is this something I want to continue? And, uh, you know, I met someone and I was thinking about settling down and it did not seem sustainable to me. Um, and that's where I had to start really looking in the mirror and deciding what do I value as an individual? Is this something I want to continue with or what else can I do and how do I do it? Because how do I feel about where I am and learning about myself and how I felt about it? That was kind of how it started going into education, going through my program and working in this field is really where I got a chance to explore more of self-care and what that meant. Um, seeing the different stigmas that there is just in, you know, in our society with this, with emotions and how people feel about it and how people have challenges um, showing their emotions, you know, creating that emotional intelligence. It's not natural for a lot of people. Um, a lot of it could be societal. You know, there's a lot of different factors behind it, how we're raised, how you know, they, our exposures in life. Uh, but it's not natural for a lot of people to do it. Uh, I want to start with this. Uh, Andrea, we can kick up that that um, that poll. Um, I want everyone, uh, if you can, take a minute, take a minute and take a look at this mood meter, um, kind of see where you are right now. Um, you'll, you'll, see, you'll see different different levels of emotions and different colors kind of connected with it. Um, if you're feeling high energy, but you're feeling maybe a little bit more irritable, you might be in the red. You might be feeling frightened, apprehensive, troubled, concerned, or worried. If you're low energy, uh, and just feeling a little bit uneasy, you might be in the blue. Um, if you're, you're feeling a little bit better energy, more positive, uh, more upbeat, I put you in the yellow. Um, low energy, but in a pretty good mood, it might put you somewhere in the green. So take a quick second, kind of see where do you feel right now? You know, it's kind of end of the day. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you with me. Um, you know, I I was kind of all over this today. Um, my, my default setting just in life is the green. That's kind of where I am as a default. Uh, tend to be in the green. Um, had a pretty good day today. Kind of shot me up to the happy. Uh, had some challenges with some students today. Uh, had, actually had to get some medical attention for some kids and call 911. So it put me kind of in the red, more in terms of like worried and like hyper-focused. Um, and now I'm here with you guys and I'm back in the green. So that was kind of my cycle today, you know? All right, if, if we can share that now, Andrea, let's share, let's share that poll. Okay, so let's take a look at kind of where everybody is today. Uh, so I see we have a couple of people in the red. Uh, I see some of us in the yellow, so feeling pretty upbeat. Thank you guys for all for being here. Uh, a couple of us in the green, kind of mellow, kind of low key, good mood. Uh, and I see a couple of us that are down, um, a little bit low energy and we're kind of in the blue. As you guys see these colors, drop in the chat. What's the best color? <laughs> what do you think? Someone laughed and you're not wrong. And I'll go ahead and just say it. There is no best color. Yes, to each their own. 
Yes. These are all appropriate places to be. All these places are is an, an appropriate place to be depending on our individual situation. You know, if, you're, if your dog is sick, or your dog's not doing well, or a family member is sick, being in the blue is a very appropriate place to be. If you're that student and you have a paper due tomorrow and you're typing it out, you're probably in the red because you're like hyper-focused, a little bit stressed, but you probably produce the best papers when you're in that mode, right? It's an appropriate place to be. So all these places are okay. All right, we can take that down. All right, thank you. All right. So it goes back to why are we here today? Um, I want to do an introduction of emotional themes, um, talk about some stressors and impacts that, that we might be feeling, and then what do we do about it? What are some of the strategies? What are some of the things we can do to change kind of where we are? Because um, as we talk about that mood meter in terms of the four quadrants, they're all appropriate, right? But what if we don't want to be there? We need to have that cognizance and that ability to label our feelings, to understand our feelings, and then decide, is this where I want to be? Why am I always in the blue? Why do I always feel in the red? But maybe I shouldn't be in the red at this moment. How can I go about changing it? What's happening in my life? So I can create that emotional intelligence. Um, and it goes into emotional regulation. You can start having a higher level of control with how you feel. So let's take a look at some societal things just kind of happening in our society, some things that need to change. And, it's in, and the change starts by creating that awareness with ourselves and in the conversations we have with people around us and our social circles. But there's this mentality that emotions make us weak, right? You know, you hear toxic masculinity for men. You know, any, and any men out there, we, we see that too, right? You know, if we cry, if we're emotional, if we talk about how we feel, how do people view us, you know? With anybody, really, you're weak. You shouldn't share your emotions. It's not okay. You know, showing that you're vulnerable doesn't show strength, right? That's not a strength. Crying too much, you're too emotional. Toughen up, get over it, walk it off. Um, you see a lot of cultural and ethnic norms as well. Um, I grew up in a very Latino culture. Um, First generation going to college, very Latino, family immigrated here from South America back in the 70s. Uh, and, and I saw it as well, you know, for for some, for for the man to be, you know, uh, in the kitchen helping or, you know, um, you know, washing the dishes or being emotional like that didn't quite happen. You couldn't do those things. It, it was it wasn't culturally accepted. Right. You see it a lot in Asian communities as well, you know. Um, it's an invasion of privacy. Keep it within the family. Don't talk about your emotions. We can't go to counseling. It's a family matter. It's private. It's none of their business. Don't overreact. You see that a lot. Um, and being aware of these things is kind of where we start making the change. When we start thinking about it and saying, hey, it's okay to cry. Hey, I feel sad right now. Hey, it hurt me when you said that to me, it hurt my feelings. Or, hey, I was disappointed when you said this to me. Using I statements, no one can take that away because it's coming from you, right? Versus you did this, you did this to me, this is what happened, you did this, you didn't listen to me, no. Come from the, from the I, I level, I'm saying I statements. I felt hurt, I felt upset, I felt bothered. I felt happy when you did this. It made me feel appreciated when you wash the dishes for me, for your significant other, right? Show that appreciation too. Um, it, it changes the narrative when, when, you, when you refocus a little bit and you approach it from an eye level, it, it changes how you feel. Understanding emotions now. We've all heard these words before. They don't seem very complicated. Do we wanna try in the chat what, what, what's an emotion? What's a mood? What's a feeling? What do you guys think that is? Because like we think we know, like, we, like I don't know what an emotion is, but define it. It's a little harder. It's a little harder to define. What's an emotion? What's a mood? And what's a feeling? It becomes a little bit more challenging. Do we have that in our vernacular? Do we have that in our vocabulary and understanding what are these things? And by understanding these things, we have a better control of ourselves. When we look at an emotion, emotions tend to be mostly automatic. 
Emotions tend to be short-lived and they tend to be a response to something. Something happened and you have a feeling about it, right? Could be something internal, something external, something somebody said that triggered a memory. Maybe someone wasn't, wasn't nice to you or maybe you had an expectation and you felt disappointed. Tend to be short-lived, kind of get over it pretty fast. A mood can come from an emotion. Not always, but a mood can come from an emotion. Tends to be less intense uh, than an emotion, but longer in duration. I always think it kind of like simmering, right? Something happened, you know, you have a mood about an emotion. Let's say, for example, you're walking down the street, someone trips and they fall down. And then you start laughing because you thought it was funny. Then you feel guilty because you laughed because they hurt their elbow. Kind of have a little bit of a contrast there, right? You laughed because you thought it was funny, then you felt bad about laughing. Um, so mood can come from an emotion as well. Uh, less intense, kind of longer in day. Sometimes we're just kind of in a crummy mood. Maybe we have a lot of things happening throughout the day. Just not our best days. You know, we kind of had a rough day. I don't really know why. You know, just my whole day was just kind of, eh, I'll sleep it off and I'll be over it tomorrow. Uh, a feeling is more subjective. Uh, it tends to be more of a private experience. It could be based on your experiences in life, on how you were raised, based on your values. Uh, you can have a feeling about an emotion as well. You know, maybe, you know, you 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 like the fact that um, someone fell down and, you know, someone you didn't like, you know, or maybe you felt bad for, you know, because you, know, you, you laughed in that moment, kind of like what we said. Um, but a good way to kind of break down what everything means, an emotion, a mood, and a feeling. So as we look at emotional themes, um, there's a lot going on here. I know there's a lot going on here, but it's good for us to understand as we have these different moods and different feelings and different emotions, there's different levels and there's different, there's different ways to express it. So being aware of the vocabulary is super important because sometimes maybe we feel, we're feeling angry. Okay, I mean, it's a very broad term. Like, are you really angry? Or are you just more, just feeling impatient? Because your food is taking too long to come out, right? You know, you're, you're, you're waiting in line, you're waiting for food to come out. You're just kind of impatient, you know? Or maybe you're feeling resentful towards somebody. Or maybe it's a little bit more than that. Maybe you're irritated because someone said a mean joke to you. You're feeling irritated. Or you're resentful towards somebody because you had an expectation of somebody and they didn't meet that expectation. Or maybe it's more than that and you're infuriated with somebody because of something they did or they you know, failed to follow through on something. Saying I'm angry doesn't really quite express the true foundational feeling. It happens a lot with kids. If you guys have any kids or siblings, or maybe you're victims of this as well, you know, hey, how was your day? Good. How was today? That was good. Okay. You have to give me more than that. I have two kids at home, and good does not get out of the conversation for my kids. I make sure I, I ask some follow up questions. Well, what was good about today? Tell me specifically what was good. What would you change about today? Creating that vocabulary with the kids, having them really identify what they're feeling, why they're feeling it, and is this a good place to be at this point? Okay, so uh, kind of take a look at that, kind of see where you are. There's different levels. It's kind of a spectrum of feelings you may have. Um, you know, if you have kids or siblings, you know, don't let them get away with some of the uh, more generalized terms. Uh, the word good is overly used. And for yourself too, you know, how am I feeling? I'm, well, I'm feeling happy. Okay, well, what does that mean? Are you feeling glad, you know? You're, you're glad that you're here maybe today. You know, you're feeling, you know, you're really happy that today was a good day because you got a job promotion. I don't know. You know. Maybe you're feeling overjoyed. You got some good news about something. Um, try to be a little bit more specific in identifying the, 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 the um, intensity of that feeling. So why does this matter to anybody? Because our feelings, it affects everything that we do. Creating that emotional regulation, it, it, it matters to how we function in a daily basis. It affects our daily lives, our attention, our memory, our learning. Uh, for those of us, our students here, you know, when, when you're more stressed out, maybe you don't learn as well. Um, and, you know, in the type of decisions we make, uh, the quality of relationships we have. I remember... And maybe I'm the only one. When I was a kid, my mom would say, hey, clean up your room. And I'd snap at my mom 
was something maybe not so nice. As I reflect on it, it had nothing to do with my mom. It had nothing to do with her. It had to do with what happened at school. It had, you know, having to do with what happened at the football game, at the basketball game I was playing, whatever it was. It had to do with a bunch of other stuff. It had nothing to do with my mom, but she's the one that I snapped at. So, our, you know, so kind of reflect back, you know, how, how, you know, how does your relationships get affected by your mood, your feelings, and, you know, kind of how you're navigating your day? Because oftentimes our, our, our significant others, our friends, the people around us might be the ones that, you know, kind of get the brunt of it, you know, maybe not the authentic you because you're going through something and having a hard time identifying it. So it, it affects our relationships. It affects our physical well-being. I mean, it affects how, like, physically how we feel, the stress, our heart, our blood pressure. You, you know, you can look at many studies on how this affects health and you know, you know, you know, higher propensity for different diseases and, you know, um, uh, you know, cancers and all these other things because of stress and anxiety that can happen. Um, so it, it can affect our physical well-being, our mental well-being. Um, we're coming out, I mean, arguably coming out of a pandemic. I mean, it was a global pandemic. And I can tell you that the mental well-being of students, um, it was hard. It was hard for a lot of students. It was probably the hardest year in education. Uh, in the last hundred years, and the mental well-being was a big part of it. But we were all in that situation, right? We all had different challenges from it. So, it, so it affects us. Um, it affects our performance, our creativity. Um, so, a lot of reasons why the emotions matter and being cognizant of how we feel. So, in identifying it, it's understanding us, who we are. How do we identify it and how does it look like in us? And you know you better than anybody, right? You know you better than anybody. So it could be emotional changes. You know, I'm feeling really anxious or I snapped at that person today or I was kind of short with them. That's not, that's not me. That's not how I typically am. What's going on with me? Maybe your, your stomach hurts all the time. You see that a lot. Oh, I'm just not hungry. I don't feel good. You have an upset stomach. You're feeling just anxious, kind of clammy. Maybe just irritable, maybe some mood swings at your at your significant other, at your friends, maybe just feeling down a lot. I'd rather just go to bed. Kind of watch for the signs. Am I isolating myself? Am I feeling a lack of energy where maybe I tended you know, to have a lot of energy in the past and kind of go out or kind of get a lot done through my day and I'm having a harder time doing that? Am I panicking? Am I breathing too heavily? Am I feeling short of breath or even worse? Are we having thoughts of not being here or even self-harm? What is said? What's, what's, in, what's in our vocabulary? How are we looking things? You know, is a glass half full, glass, no, glass half empty? Are we more negative in our thoughts? Are we more positive in our thoughts? How are we looking at things? Speaking in absolutes is something to always be aware of. I will never. I have never been good at. Why should I even try? What's the point? I can't. So-and-so is better than me. Why even try that? I will never get it. What's the point? I will never get chemistry. I will never get this subject matter. I will never get that promotion. What's the point of even trying? It's too hard. What's the point? I'm not going to try. I don't want to be here watch for those things. How am I speaking based on the situations? How do I perceive situations? Catch yourself. Hey, I need to change my outlook. Something needs to change here. We look at our processing, kind of how, how do we view situations? Um, kind of a counseling nerd, um, so I apologize, but I thought this was kind of cute, so I'll share this. Um, we look at different lo uh, locuses of control. Uh, people that tend to be internal or external. Um, cute cartoon. So I'll kind of talk about this. You know, how do you view situations? Do things happen to you or do you have control over what's happening? You know, if you have an internal locus of control, you make things happen. It's you have control of things. I can do it if I try really hard. I can overcome that challenge. I didn't do it this time, but I'll do it next time. 
There is no good or bad in these situations. I, I have a very internal look as a control. I look at everything as an opportunity. My failure is an opportunity to do better. My success is an opportunity to continue to do what I've been doing. Everything to me is an opportunity. That's how I frame it with students that I work with. Or are things happening to me? Oh, I was mad because you said this. Why are you in a bad mood? Because you did this to me. I'm angry at you because you didn't do what you said you were going to do. I'm mad at my boss because he said this. Is it everybody else's fault? Because things are going to happen. And real talk, things are going to happen you don't have control over. How do you react to those situations? I always think about it this way. Imagine you're driving on any freeway, because they're all terrible at this point. You're driving on the 57 freeway up to Cal Poly or away from Cal Poly, and you're stuck in bumper to bumper traffic. You and I are right next to each other in our cars. I'm in the car on my side, upset, angry, not in a good mood. Why is the traffic here? What happened? Having a miserable time. You're in the car right next to me playing music. Maybe you're dancing. Maybe you're singing along, making the best of the situation. We're both in the car. We're both in the same situation, but we have very different approaches to how we're handling that situation. Are you going to be like me in the car being super upset? Or you can be the one singing and dancing and trying to just make the best of that situation, understanding that traffic, traffic happens, accidents happen, delays happen. It's going to be okay. I'm going to get through this okay. I'm going to make the best of it. And that's really what it is. So I want to pull up some stats. I know we have some students here. I want to pull up some stats as well and just kind of see, you know, some of the stressors. Um, and you see it, you know, you, 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 see, you see stress, you know, on the college level for, you know, for, for those of you that are students, it's, it might be the first time you left home, right? It might be the first time you're living on your own. You know, now you're going to this big campus that could be a little bit daunting. Um, I saw 64% of students, this is 2020, uh, dropped out because of mental health. Uh, approximately 75% uh, of mental illness established by age of 24. 24% uh, struggle with symptoms of being bipolar, 41% depression. Um, these, these are all pretty big stats. And, and, and this is, you know, if you look at the bottom, right, um, you know, fall of 2019, and then from March to May of 2020, you kind of see how it jumped. What happened during that time period from March to May 2020? The whole world shut down, right? And I think these numbers are undersold. They're smaller than what they actually are. Um, during that time period, when you look at students that are held on 72 hour holds in K through 12s uh, for suicidal ideation, the numbers actually went down during the pandemic. Is that an accurate depiction of what was happening? No, it went down because nobody was reporting it because they were at home and they weren't at school with people that would catch these things and make the call and get the students help and support. They, they just weren't reported because people were at home. So you see the stress and the anxiety that went up during this time. These are all kind of cute, yeah? Tell me if you've heard this before. Be kind to others. Share your toys. Play with him. Share. Like we've heard this just in our, in, in our lives growing up, yeah? You know, make sure you're sharing. Make sure you're being nice. Share your apple. Be kind to him. Bring him along. And those are all wonderful things. I'm not saying they're not. They're all wonderful, wonderful things and lessons to teach our youth and our kids, right? But how often are we telling kids or have people told us, be kind to yourself, be nice to yourself, speak to yourself in a kind way? Probably not as often as we should have. That's because in society, we, we don't look at it that way. And it's great that we're sharing and we're teaching kids, but we need to we need to shift it a little bit and think about ourselves and make sure that we're we're being taken care of and that we're being kind to ourselves and we can navigate the feelings that we're having. Okay, so think about it if you guys have kids or anything. But I do this in schools all around, and I always have kids raise their hands, and all the hands go up when I talk about it. And then when I talk about who's telling you to be kind to yourself, more than half the hands tend to go down. Because it's not being talked about. 
and that's a societal issue. So it really starts with talking and being kind to yourself. That's a foundational, foundational um, item that we all have to do. How do we speak to ourselves? Um, understanding the power of yet. Like I said, everything is an opportunity, right? If you're doing something well, keep doing that. Keep doing that. If you're not getting to your goals, if you're not reaching your goals, that's an opportunity to do better. Doesn't mean you failed. Doesn't mean you can't do it. You have an opportunity there. It starts with positive self-talk, being flexible, because sometimes you're not going to find success. That's just that's just real life. You're not going to be able to do it. It's going to be hard. Be flexible with your goals. Learn how to pivot to something else and be okay with that. Give yourself some grace. Life is hard, guys. I get it. We're wearing a lot of hats, right, from work and obligations and school and projects and bosses and coworkers and classmates. I mean, there's a lot of things that we're all navigating here. Be kind to yourself. Give yourself a little bit of grace and positive self-talk. Every morning, and I do this, every morning when I wake up, I say, I'm going to have a good day. I'm going to have a good day. Guess what? I'm probably going to have more good days than not. Find a mantra for yourself, whatever that is. I'm going to have a good day. Today, I can do it. I'm going to do great in that presentation. I'm going to finish that project. I'm going to nail that job interview. I'm going to do my best. And if you can do all those things, you're probably going to have a better day than not. Whether you get the outcome or not, hey, I did my best during that job interview. Hey, I tried really hard. Hey, I prepared the best I could. I have to be satisfied with that. I tell my kids, I don't care about your grades. I care about your effort. I don't care about your grades. Just try. And if you're not trying, we'll talk about it. But if you're trying and you don't get the grades you want, dad's okay with that. This was a cool little video. Kind of want to share. Uh, I thought his dad was doing an awesome job. And hopefully we can all be like him and his daughter. So let's take a quick minute to watch this. Look at yourself. Look in your eyes. You got to see it, okay? You got to feel it. You ready? You ready for school? Yeah. Is it going to be a good day? Mm -hmm. A really good day? You going to be positive? Say, I am strong. I am strong. Say, I am smart. I am smart. Say, I work hard. I work hard. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I am respectful. I am respectful. Yeah. Say, I'm not better than anyone. I'm not better than anyone. Nobody's better than me. No one's better than me. I am amazing. I am amazing. I am great. I am great. What's your name? Aaliyah Austin. If you fall? I get back up. What are you? I'm blessed. Yes. Say thank you, God. Thank you, God. For making me. For making me. The greatest. The greatest. There's nobody. There's nobody. Better. Better. Than me. Than me. I love her. I love her. That's so great. How do you think she's going to do when she has a challenge, right? She's, the dad is creating emotional regulation with her, emotional intelligence. That's I love Look at yourself. So we have to start by caring about ourselves. That's really kind of where we start. So what are things that we can do? Check in with ourselves regularly. That mood meter I did. Check in with, with yourself on a regular basis, morning, afternoon, afternoon and night. Kind of see where you are because, you know, life is kind of a roller coaster. We're kind of up and down. Like I said, today I was kind of all over that. I was kind of all over that today. You know, I went from the green to the red to the yellow, back down to the blue, and then finishing the green, right? Kind of check in with ourselves. What am I feeling? Why am I feeling it? And is this where I need to be? Be mindful, which means be aware of how you're feeling, your posture, what's, what am I giving off? How's my energy right now? Am I being short with people? Am I in a good mood right now? I'm not, why? Oh, maybe I'm hungry. I get hangry. I don't know about you guys. At some point, I need to take a break, have some food, and I'm back on whatever I need to do. Be a scientist, not a judge. 
we talked about that mood meter and the feelings and what's you know what was the best color there is no best color right they're all appropriate places to be you know it's it's, it's understanding about why we're feeling it not so much as judging you know and and having that 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 strong mindset of you know kind of where you are or it is what it is you know we got to be flexible with ourselves you know we got to take care of ourselves um so kind of explore your feelings and why you're there maybe life is kind of rough right now you know maybe life is kind of feeling kind of scary just kind of where i am right now in life and there's a lot of unknowns happening right now in life I'm feeling a little bit anxious about this. What can I do in this situation so I can feel a little bit better? Because I'm worried about finding a job and graduating or trying to get that promotion or whatever that might be. We're all going through something. Understanding what's your outlet. Because things get heavy. Things get heavy on your shoulder. Things get heavy on your chest when all this stress is, is happening. What's your outlet in this situation? Like how, how can I take a moment? Um, what works for me? People do different things and, and, it's, and it's being open to those things. For me, honestly, it's always been going on a walk. I just need to go on a walk. Uh, you know, go on a walk. I like to work out. That, that, that's been my release. I've learned to talk about my emotions over the last 10 years where in the past I probably wouldn't have. I just kind of suck it in. But I work in a very stressful environment. Work with a lot of students. I have a lot of mental health issues. And I have a very busy schedule. So I have to manage a lot of things and at the same time be there for my kids and my wife and the family that I have. So there's a lot of things I need to balance. So I'm very much about self-care and scheduling things. Be available for yourself. Uh, be open to all emotions. Remember, there is no such thing as a negative emotion. You know, praise your effort. You know, I didn't do everything I wanted to do on my on my to-do list, but I, I got some of the stuff done and I feel pretty good about it. In spite of it being a busy day, I got a lot done. I'm proud of myself. Tomorrow, I'll keep working at it. There is no failure. Remove that from your vocabulary. I have an opportunity to do better now. Frame it that way. You're going to feel things a little differently when you look at it that way. I have an opportunity tomorrow to do better. Because maybe today I wasn't my best self. Or I shouldn't have said what I said. So I'm going to go ahead and apologize for it. Find that opportunities. We all got busy schedules. I get it. It feels like sometimes we're spinning plates, right? We're spinning plates and hopefully we don't break a plate because we're running around. Take a look at your schedule. How are you organizing yourself? What works for you? Um, I have, you know, my, my wife, she has like the old, you know, the old calendars that she actually likes to, you know, she likes to write it down and she, you know, that works for her. She likes to put you know, a, a pencil to paper and actually write down on her calendar that she buys every year. And that works for her. I can't do it that way. That doesn't work for me. Everything's on my phone. I use a calendar feature and I literally have everything on my calendar. I even put some time where I need, like I know I need some, some, you know, some like a break and some alone time. Like I'll put it in, go on a walk on Saturday, you know, 6 a.m. I'll, I'll put it in my calendar. So like, this is what I'm going to do. Something I can look forward to, something I'm excited about. Um, I'm going to put that down on my calendar because I need to put it down because I know how busy I am on Monday through Friday. Or I know uh, tomorrow I have a little bit of a break. I'm teaching class on Thursday. Tomorrow I'm going to have dinner with my family. I'm going to take my kids out somewhere. I'm very much looking forward to that. Puts me in a good mood. I scheduled it in my calendar. It's something that's going to happen and it's going to help me kind of get through the rest of my week because I created a break. Every Sunday, I take a look at my calendar and I kind of see what do I have going on this week. I got like three work calendars. I have a calendar with my wife and I got my personal calendar and I talk about it with my wife. We talk about it, you know, during breakfast time, usually, hey, what's your calendar? What do you have? This is what I have. Find a way to organize yourself. Whether you buy one of those paper calendars, those little book calendars, or you use your phone, find a way to organize yourself. Because also it's nice where it's it's there. Like, I'm not going to worry about it because it's on my calendar. Like, it's there. It's done. Like, I'll, work, like, I'll worry about that problem when it rings on my phone, right? When I get that reminder. That works for me. Find that and make sure you find a balance, too. Find that balance. You know, I used to I used to play basketball. I used to draw a lot. I used to I haven't painted in a long time. I wish I could do that again. We'll do it. Schedule on your calendar. Whatever happens, 
Saturday at two o'clock, you're going to stop everything and paint or color or draw or go take photos, whatever that is. Find that for yourself. We got to understand what success looks like. There's, there's a mentality of what we think success looks like. Um, it's not realistic, honestly. It's not realistic. You know, people think it's a straight line. It kind of goes straight up. I work hard, I'll, get, I'll be successful. I work hard, I'll be successful. That's not real life. Success comes with a lot of challenges. Success comes with recovering from a no, from a failure, from not having expectation met. And once we realize that and we can learn to bounce back, that's where we start creating a level of perseverance amongst ourselves. We create a level of the ability to navigate not only our feelings, but the challenges that get presented to us. Because things don't happen to us, right? We control our emotions. Things don't happen all to us or dominate us. We control how we feel. We control how we react to those things. Understand yourself. Who can I talk to when things get heavy? What are my triggers? What can I do when I identify myself getting escalated? If you're ha- if you're if if you're upset, or maybe you're sad, or especially if you've, if you've ever had a panic attack, there tends to be certain not only triggers, but the, a physiological change that happens. My heart's beating faster. My palms are getting sweaty. My muscles are kind of tightening up. I'm getting angry. I'm getting upset. I'm getting sad. I'm whatever it is. I can't get up in the morning. It's a Saturday morning. It's a beautiful day, but I just can't get up. I can't face the day. Understanding what are your triggers? What happens? How do you, how do, how do you catch yourself in those moments? And we're talking about split seconds from things happening. Understanding yourself. When you look at uh, young adults in college, You kind of look at the systems of support. I put it right there on the bottom right. Um, Friends are our base system of support. Um, Parents, guardians, siblings, uh, roommates, uh, and extended family. So kind of think about who are your systems of support? Who do I have that I can talk to? Who in my life is that? You know, who can I text? Um, Talking about feelings, uh, it helps. It gets us off our shoulders and kind of puts it out in the world. Be okay with talking about it. The more we hold things in, the more we isolate ourselves, it's hard. You make life a little bit harder. Even if you're going through something heavy, like the grieving process, if you lost somebody important to you, there's things you can do to navigate that. And in those situations, it's about routine. Finding a healthy routine and doing it every single day. Because the last thing you want to do is isolate yourself and not go through your daily routines. So some takeaways I hope everyone can have is, as we had this conversation on being mindful of the time, um, actionable items, things that you can really start like now, today, you know, um, staying organized, stay organized. You know your schedule better than everyone. Make sure it's visible. Write it down somewhere. Maybe you have a big poster board in your room or in the kitchen. Uh, it's on the refrigerator. You have a little dry erase board. You have it on your cell phone. You have one of those books you can buy at like Staples or Target or something, whatever it is, stay organized. Practice breathing. We're going to do that in a minute. But people think they know how to breathe and you don't know the power behind doing deep breathing exercises and we'll do it at the end. Uh, Practice self-talk. Find a mantra, find a quote. I'm all about quotes. I love quotes. I love positivity quotes. Makes me feel better something I connect with. I love music. There's actually certain songs I listen to when I'm having a rough day. Uh, Foo Fighters, times like these. That's that's my song, whatever reason. Um, find something that works for you. You know, uh, find a mantra every single day. Okay. Uh, what are your habits? Do you have healthy habits? Are you staying up till two, three in the morning, running on three hours of sleep? Probably not a good habit. Sleep and taking care of your body is super important. You on social media till midnight? Uh, maybe not a good habit, right? Call yourself out on this stuff. You know, uh, I'll, I'll be done with social media by 9 30, 10 o'clock, be in bed by 10, up by seven, whatever. That's a good eight hours. Our mind needs to be rested. Um, go outside, get some vitamin D. Cognitively speaking, you'll feel better. 
right? Go outside, schedule that time. Maybe just walk around the block. If you have a dog, go walk your dog. Do things to de-stress. If you feel that pain, that heaviness is getting a little bit harder, schedule something for yourself that you enjoy. You know, I haven't read that book that I've been wanting to read. I don't draw as much as I used to draw or paint. Um, look up therapy coloring. A lot of templates you can download on the internet for therapy coloring. I did it a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, oh, this is great. Like I'm like focusing on this and not worrying about my other problems. Fantastic. Run, get back into exercise, do some music, journaling. People don't journal enough. Get a journal, get a journal, get a piece of paper. If you don't know what to do or how to do it, just start with today I feel. Start with that. Today I feel. And then let your mind run with it. Wherever, wherever it takes you, plan a trip, do some yoga, do some stretching. You'll physically feel better and clear your mind. One of my favorite quotes, and I used to say this to me to myself all the time, and I got it from when I used to play sports. Whatever happened, I was going to keep moving forward. So Martin Luther King, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. Something that I've, I've told myself for the last 15, 20 years. This has, been my, this has been my quote that's helped me. So find something that works for you, something you connect with. I want to go over, uh, actually leave you guys some tools for the last eight minutes. Um, Andrea, are we going to share this with everybody? Yeah, definitely. We can send it out tomorrow with a link to the recording as well. Fantastic. Um, this uh, this is a great website. Uh, I'll, cl I'll click on it real, real fast. Uh, well, I won't click on it, but I have a screenshot on the right. Um, this would be a neat website. Actually, it, it's 101 positive things to say to yourself. This is really cool. It's just a snippet of it. It's literally a list of 101 positive things to say to yourself. And I like this, and I use this as, as a counseling tool with, with, with individuals where I want, I like for everyone to go through whenever you guys get this and find the ones that connect with you. Find, look at the 101 things, find things that connect with you on this list. And the cool thing is once you find your two, three, four, five, or 15 things, at the bottom, you'll click on make list, and then it'll compile the ones you clicked on onto a list. And then I would say print it out. And put it somewhere visible. Put it in the mirror where you brush your teeth. So when you're brushing your teeth, you're there hopefully at least twice a day. You can say these things to, these things to yourself. Put it where you're studying. Put it um, in your office if you're working. Put it somewhere where it's visible where you can say these things and remind you maybe this is where you start getting your mantra, right? You know, I matter. I'm important. I'm strong. I'm confident and beautiful. My problem has solutions. I will work on a plan. A lot of real good stuff in there. So check this out when you guys get, get a copy of this, um, this presentation, a uh, re really good website. Uh, understanding our resources. Um, this is for, for the students I have here. Um, I did some searching around, kind of saw, well, what does Cal Poly have? I'm sure Cal Poly's got some real, real good stuff. Um, and yes, they do. They got a lot of good stuff. They actually have some wellness workshops. So that was real cool to see. Um, if you haven't checked it out, check out the Cal Poly Wellness Workshops. I saw a lot of good stuff. Um, this one's coming up on March 10th, Refriending Your Body. Um, that was a cool one. Talked about breathing and stuff um, and just kind of being cognizant of our emotions. And I loved it. But seeing it, I mean, they have one-on-one -on -one counseling, group counseling. There's different workshops, um, in different departments with disabilities, student health services, uh, sexual violence, dating, domestic abuse. A lot of different uh, resources for students. Uh, definitely check that out. Definitely check it out. I thought it was pretty neat. Um, not everyone is still on campus. So there's some other resources that I thought was interesting. Uh, 988. Uh, this is the number uh, you may have heard, may not, not have heard. Recently became the National Suicide Crisis Lifeline. Um, kind of like, you know, 911, you have an emergency. Uh, if you're having a mental emergency, go 988. It doesn't have to be specifically if you're having suicidal thoughts. If you're not, you know, it doesn't mean that you're that deep down. But maybe you're just having a crisis. You need to talk with somebody. Um, great resource. So not just if you're having the real dark thoughts. If you're just having a hard time, you need to talk with somebody. You need some resources. I don't know where to go. 
this is what I've been feeling. I'm not okay with this. Um, try 988 on your phone. So on your phone, dial 988. Um, the Trevor Project, if you're not familiar, a uh, great website, the Trevor Project. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a website that has a lot of resources and information on LGBTQ. Um, and, uh, you know, and for those that are part of the community and allies, um, for a lot of those individuals, you know, whether, whether you maybe you're part of it or not part of it or not sure about or you're questioning, that causes a lot of stress. The, there's a lot of changes, you know, uh, internally. There's a lot of changes with family dynamics, you know, if you're not fully out yet or not sure how to go about that or not, not sure how to process your feelings. Check out the Trevor Project, a uh, really cool website, a lot of good resources. Um, findtreatment.gov, um, cool website. If you're not sure where to start, I don't know where to go. I feel, I don't know, I don't know who to talk to. My friends aren't equipped to have this conversation. I don't really have that person. Maybe you need that neutral party. I think everyone should do counseling. Personally, everyone should have a therapist and counselor because it helps us so much. Um, I went on, this is actually a screenshot, you know, typed in Pomona, 25 miles, and a ton of stuff came up. Lots of places in the network. So check it out. Um, you can filter based on kind of your situation, um, findtreatment.gov. Um, also speak with your insurance. Uh, you know, you guys have insurance, speak with them. You know, they probably have a department that you haven't talked to. Find out what resources do they have for mental health services. You know, maybe it's not something dire. You need someone to talk to. You're just kind of feeling down. Um, that's totally okay. Speak with your insurance. <clears throat> All right, some deep breathing. That's how we're going to wrap it up. We don't do this enough. It's not only easy, it's scientifically proven to work. When you do deep breathing, you have a physiological change in your system. Your blood pressure begins to drop. Your heart begins to slow down. You start creating a sense of calm. We don't do this enough. So if you can humor me, I know you have your cameras off, but let's go ahead and try this, okay? So I wanna ask you guys if we can get comfortable in your seats, uncross your legs. If you can't, put your hands on the table or on, or on your lap, okay? And you can kind of look at the box. What we're gonna do is, and, and don't do it yet, what we're going to do is we're going to take a deep breath with our nose and we're going to fill up our lungs with, with air. We're going to hold it for a, for a count of three and then we're going to slowly breathe out. Think of blowing out a birthday candle. But you can do it slowly and you can do it controlled. Like that. You're going to let that, or that oxygen out then you're going to do it again. So let's do it together. Let's do about five to seven breaths. Deep breath in, hold it, out, slowly and controlled. Deep breath in, keep going. You're going to hold it and out. Okay. Hopefully you got a few in there. Hopefully you feel a little better. Now, if you can, just take a moment. We don't have to put up the poll, but just kind of take a moment and look and see where you are and see if you're in the same place you were when we started. I hope there was a little bit of a shift from where you started, especially if you felt like you were in the red or in the blue. Maybe we transition a little bit more to the green or, or, or the yellow even. But doing these simple things helps. Deep breathing. You can do it at any time, anywhere. All right. True to my word, 7 o'clock. Um, feel free to connect with me if you would like. I, uh, I have a little um, QR code right there. Uh, that's my LinkedIn. So thank you guys so much. That's all that I have. Um, feel free to drop any questions. I'll be here for a few more.